He dropped your phone. Uh, definitely in the uh, pass covers. Need to uh, be a little bit better. Um, they threw the ball 51 times. Uh, we had a couple plays get away from us. Um, you know, I think if we take those plays away, we, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, but um, you know, I would say that's where we're focusing at. You know, we understand. You know, playing a really good quarterback, and he probably seen the same film that they saw. So uh, they're gonna try to uh, attack us in the pass game. Pittsburgh is a team that's been known to throw it 50 times in a game, too. Does that oddly help you prepare for a game like this week, or are, are they different enough to where there's not a whole lot you can carry over? Um, it's a little different because of the you know, quarterback. Quarterback's a little bit different. Um, the, the way he extends plays is different. Um, the routes that they run, uh, the guys that they like to feature, uh, a little bit different. Um, you know, but anytime you um, you know, have a team throwing you 51 times. It's always good practice in your coverage. How different was more three linebackers last week? That oh, was amazing, didn't you think? It was, <laughs> you know, the more linebackers, the merrier. Okay. So I think, uh, you know, the whole league should adopt that. What, what was different for you to have the two flanking you all the time? Um, you know, it really wasn't too much different for me because we run it a lot. We just didn't, like, feature it. So, um, really, Mike kind of just replaced the nickel for, per, per se. Like, so basically, like, Certain things that uh, the nickel will come in and do, uh, they just had uh, Mike Mike doing and KJ doing. So uh, as far as me, it wasn't really um, much different. It was just different guys on the outside of you. Are you expecting more tests down the field if you're going to go 4-3 and then try to get wheel routes and things like that on your, on your linebackers? Um, I think when they see when they see the, the big linebackers out, they're going to try to uh, Definitely pass the ball a little bit, but you know I feel like most teams want to establish the run. So, you know, at some point they they're going to try to establish the run. We're going to do a good job of, of switching things up, so uh, we'll be ready for it. What challenges does Blaffelsberger present? You mentioned he extends plays. Is there anything else about him that's unique? Um, you know, definitely extending plays is a thing that sticks out, and he's uh, really hard to get down. I think a lot of it. Um, um, you know, they, they don't really give up too many sacks. Uh, part of it is because their O line so good, and another part is because, you know, he's he's really big. It's probably, I mean, I don't know how tall he is, but probably like six, seven, something. I don't know. So um, uh, it's really hard to get him down. So we got to make sure that we don't allow him to just sit back there and find open receivers. Uh, we got to do a good job of pressuring him. Do a good job of, you know, when we have him, uh, bring him down. That's why we do push-ups. Good to see Quinn Jefferson have a game like that. That guy's been around for a few years. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, great to see him. You know, he's been through so much. You know, he had, you know, a couple scary um, injuries. And for him to come back and, you know, first game, you know, be as dominant as he was, was uh, really cool to see. Um, you know, the whole front was just, uh, did a really good job. Uh, you know, I, I barely got touched. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Bobby, um, a lot of people on the outside have been making a big deal out of Tedrick's play, in, in particular with that um, uh, that 55-yard touchdown. I guess, is there anything that you, as a leader, try and say to a guy when something like that happens, or do you sort of just kind of a general sense of you know you, you got it next time? Or how do you kind of approach that? Well, um, you try to go up to him and and voice your support and. You know, it's hard, you know, anytime you get beat, it's hard for a guy to really kind of understand that, myself included. But, um, you know, the thing that I try to tell him was just, you know, everybody's been there. Like, everybody has had a play go over their head or had a play where I missed a tackle or, you know, something has happened, you know, and it, it, it's more character how you bounce back than when it happens because it's going to happen. You know, it's you play this game long enough, you're going to get beat off of something that you should never get beat off of. So, um, you know, you just try to tell him to move forward and, and, you know, get the next play. But, you know, we had, you know, we had his back. Uh, we were very supportive and we understood, and, you know, uh, we trust him and he, he normally makes those plays. So he wasn't thinking too much of it. it. It was just one of those plays that just got away and, and we moved on. You always hear, I think, say, a win's a win. We don't care how we got it. But individually, if you have a poor performance or if there's a play like that, is it hard to enjoy a win sometimes, even in that sense? Cause there's something that you did individually that's in your head? Um, I think it depends on uh, where you're at in your career. I think um, the younger you are, it's harder to enjoy those wins. The older you are, um, 
you know, you can find a way to enjoy them because you understand that uh, you understand how hard it is to get wins in this league, and everybody is really good, no matter what their record is. You know, if they come out and that's their best day, uh, they can beat you. So, um, yeah, I think it depends on what point of your career it is. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, you know, uh, well, you're eight, so I can enjoy that one. You said, you know, everyone has a play like that. Do you remember a play like that, that you had early in your career or, or over the past few years? That Shoot, I don't know. Name a couple of plays. Um, there was a playoff. There was one in the playoffs my rookie year. I think it was Gonzalez. He caught uh, that pass over the middle. It's a play that I make majority of the times that I make now. But he caught it. They kicked the field goal, won the game. You feel like you lost the game for the team, and uh, you know that one was kind of hard because you go into the off season had to think about that the whole rest of the thing, but, you know, there are so many plays that happen, so many different situations, and, you know, as you get older, you realize that. But that would be the first one that I think of my rookie year when um, that happened. I don't think Le'Veon played against you guys four years ago, but from what you've seen of him compared to how James Conner runs now, what are their differences? What are you going to have to prepare for with James? Um, I think they're both, uh, you could tell that, you know, he learned from Le'Veon. You know, they're both really, really patient. Um, they're both, uh, you know, I feel like maybe they use Bell a little bit more in the past game, um, splitting them out. But I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to do that with uh, with Connor because he's, he's a really good back. You know, um, he's very patient. You know, those, that line is, is really good. And, you know, he does a good job hiding behind them. And so we have to be patient and we have to find them and get them down. In the game or on film, what did you see from Clowney that might have been a little different from what you've seen from other fresh hands? Um, you know, he was just doing what I saw him on film. He was in the backfield. Uh, you know, there's one play that sticks out where uh, he beats the um, the tackle or the guard and uh, gets a holding call because he beat him so fast and the guy basically tackled him. Uh, you know, he just makes plays in the backfield. Uh, he's really strong, really hard to uh, to block one on one. So you definitely, uh, I definitely felt like there was a lot of eyes on him. Is your sitting there watching the line, kind of figure out their coverage. Is it, or their assignments, is it very obvious that he's affecting everything they do when he would come on the field? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I feel all those guys did a really good job, um, you know, last game. Al did a great job, uh, you know, making sure nobody touched me. Uh, uh, Q was in the backfield. Um, I felt like the whole front did a really good job. What do you think that's like to, to do what Connie did, basically show up, uh, I don't know, a week and a half before the first game and have four or five practices under his belt and then play as much as he did? Um, it just shows how much he loved football. It shows, you know, uh, his smarts and his athletic ability to be able to come in here and, and um, learn uh, the defense as well as he can, and uh, you know, get out there and try to make plays. You know, I feel like it's, you know, good to have guys like myself and KJ out there to help him out a little bit. But um, you know, he's just you can't teach, you know, what he's been blessed with. As somebody who's taken a couple to the house over the years, what do you think of Al Woods' return skills on the? Uh, pretty good. You know, we got to work on it a little bit. Uh, he should at least made it to the other 20, in my opinion. But uh, I'll teach him a little, little bit. You said you want to clean up, you know, pass for uh, stuff in the, in the secondary against the pass game. Uh, is that harder to do when you spend so much time in base where you might automatically be more susceptible in the pass game? Uh, no, I don't think so because I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm confident. You know, I know the league doesn't think so, but linebackers are really good. So we don't need DBs to come in. You know, linebackers are dope. But um, if, I, if y'all didn't hear, linebackers are dope. I said it again. But um, no, nah, I just, you know, you got to understand what it is. You know, um, they're they not going to run different routes. Um, they just feel like, you know, the uh, they feel like they have an advantage when they see like a linebacker on a receiver or things of that nature. And uh, they try to go go at it, but it's the same thing whether it's a nickel or anybody else. It's you know making sure you get the the, the front four, getting a good pass rush. It's making sure you're reading your keys and 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 doing those things. Um, and so uh, we we had a specific game plan uh, last week, and and I felt like you know it was our job to go out there and execute it. And so it could be different, could be the same. When you travel, is there, for road games, is there a must-have item that you have to pack with you every time? I feel like this is coming from somewhere. No. Uh, must-have. Uh, my cell phone, my 
uh, my Beats or my headphones, gotta have headphones. Um, my iPad, a good book. Um, definitely gotta have clothes, can't leave without that. Um, yeah, that'll be the first thing that come to my mind. What book you taking? Uh, I'm listening to a book. Um, it's the 22 Laws of Branding. Have you ever worn a watch in a game? Huh? Have you ever worn a watch in a game? Have I ever worn? No, I haven't. I, I'm too afraid to, to lose it. But, uh, you know, if they pay me to wear one, I definitely would wear one. <laughs> How much do you appreciate Pete Carroll's um, dress code on road trips? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for it. I don't know if, you know, when you're getting on a seven hour plane ride, I'm not really trying to be in a suit. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're grateful for it. I think he understands, you know, um, those long plane rides, you don't want to be in slacks. You want to be in something comfortable. So I appreciate it. Was it like that college year? Um, nah, we had a, they gave us a, a jumpsuit, like a Utah State jumpsuit. So it was basically sweats. Going back to the 22 Laws of branding, are you working on branding yourself? Is that why you're reading that book by Al Riles? Uh, you always working on branding yourself. You're always working on, uh, because I told you, I, I'm in business. So, you know, just because I play football don't mean I can't, you know, learn about business. So uh, it just tells you, like, what certain brands did to um, to kind of jumpstart their brand, uh, what mistakes they made. Um, uh, you know, it talked about different, like, there was one with, like, Coca-Cola. Everybody knows, like, Coca-Cola, they try to branch off and do something different. Why that's bad. Um, is basically like sticking to what you know, different type, like knowing your audience, knowing um, you know who is buying your products and and why. And so, you know, someday when I get out there in the field, I'm selling. I'm gonna make sure I can brand it. You're selling at IBM. Huh? IBM. I don't know if I got that chapter yet. I'm like two hours in, of like seven hours. So we got a long plane ride. I'll be making sure I'm listening in my sweats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, take me. Thanks, bye. bye.